Possible new bombshell in the Benghazi probe. Yeah, in a closed door interview, retired FBI supervisor now alleging that Deputy Director Andrew McCabe instructed him mm. to not call the attack an act of terror. So does this all speak to the issue of political bias against the agency? Big question. Everyone wants the answer. Here now to weigh in is the congressman who interviewed that agent, Ron DeSantis. Thank you for joining us, Congressman. We really appreciate it. Can you tell us what went into that conversation you had on Wednesday? Well, this was someone who was a very experienced agent, and um, he thought at the time during the Benghazi and the aftermath of the Benghazi attack that it was odd that that instruction was coming down because they had identified within 48 hours that they could tell through their use of different tools that they have that this was a pre-planned terrorist attack, and yet you have this order coming down saying, do not refer to it, do not refer to it as terrorism. That was consistent at the time with Hillary and Obama and what they were saying, but now now, the reason why I wanted to, to talk about this now is because you have all these other data points that have been bubbling up. And he said, you know, I wasn't sure the reason for it now, but, but looking at it, I'm really concerned that this was part of a larger political bias problem within the Bureau. Hmm. So when people exhibit certain things, I mean, you can vote for whoever you want. You can listen to Sean Hannity or you can watch uh, liberal uh, news. But if your actions are then not really explicable other than that, that's kind of the problem. And so that's what he saw. Well, Representative DeSantis, there are also a number of connections between Mr. McCabe and the Clintons. Why don't you go into a little bit of detail on that to the extent that you can? Well, I mean, his, uh, his wife was a, a state Senate candidate in Virginia, uh, was supported heavily by Terry McAuliffe. I mean, you're talking about $700,000 uh, worth of support. And, and, of course, McAuliffe is very, very close and has been for years with the Clinton family. Can you talk to us a little bit about why, in your opinion, the Benghazi attack wouldn't be called terrorism? Well, the agent's opinion was, look, there are some times when you may not know, but in this case, they were able to determine uh, that this was something that was motivated by terrorism. This was an al-Qaeda attack, effectively, and most of the agents at that time thought that that was a slam-dunk assessment. So the issue is, is why would you then say not to call it what the evidence that you are currently gathering uh, would suggest that it is. Yeah. Where do you think this all leads, Representative DeSantis? Because we're in a situation now where the FBI has been literally called out on the carpet, Christopher Ray there yesterday defending the organization, but doing so with a little bit of a hand tie behind his back because he just started this new job, mm -hmm. quite frankly, moments ago. So where does this all lead? Well, I think Director Ray has a chance to really help uh, right the ship here. And the way to do that is to turn over some of the information that both the Intelligence Committee and the Judiciary Committee are asking about the genesis of the Trump dossier. You know, that was funded by the Democratic Party. Christopher Steele, he was working with a lot of Russians to compile this. It's a discredited dossier. But what happened is, at some point, the FBI actually took cognizance of that dossier. Uh, so why did they take cognizance of it? Did they pay Christopher Steele for the dossier? And then did they use the dossier to justify surveillance of Trump associates uh, with the FISA court? And you also got to remember this guy, Peter Strzok, who was relieved of duty from Mueller's investigation. Strzok was the lead agent on Hillary's uh, case, which was obviously questionable how that was handled. And then he was the lead agent on the so-called Trump Russia case. Um, he, he had anti-Trump text, which you know, it was obviously something, but we don't even know if that was it. There may be more reasons why he was relieved of duty, but was he involved with Christopher Steele? Was he involved with the dossier? Did he bring that information to the FISA court to try to get surveillance? We need answers to those questions. Director Ray did not provide those yesterday. Um, Devin Nunes is pushing. I think the Speaker of the House is going to be talking with Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein. But clearly, we need to know whether the FBI was using effectively uh, opposition party research uh, to justify surveillance against a rival political candidate. That would be a clear misuse uh, of bureau resources. Well, and I think in all fairness, the public wants answers too. They want the truth. We do have to run, but real quick, just a couple seconds here. When do you think we start to see accountability? Well, Rosenstein's coming to the Judiciary Committee next week, and if they haven't answered our concerns by then, I think it's going to be a rough day for them. All right. Thank you for joining us this morning, Congressman DeSantis. We really appreciate it.
Senator Al Franken's offering a not-so-funny farewell. The man who was accused of multiple gropings and other stuff will resign, but no apologies, no admission of guilt, just accusations, and lashing out, of course, against President Trump and Senate candidate Roy Moore. As predicted, Franken was a victim of the PC lynch mob, but now there's a backlash against the Ingram angle for identifying the real cause of his ousting. It was all a cynical political ploy. And a huge development at the Justice Department, a top official demoted after reportedly, as we thought, coordinating with the law firm peddling that infamous anti-Trump Russian dossier. But we begin with the fall of the liberal icon comedian Al Franken and the Me Too pandemic. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Look, Franken really had no choice after most of his Democratic colleagues in the Senate called him to quit, called on him to quit. But listen closely to his statement today. Some of the allegations against me are simply not true. Others I remember very differently. Think about that for a moment. He's basically calling members of that Me Too movement liars. But he's unwilling to fight for his reputation. I happen to think this is a bad decision, and I pretty much don't agree with him on anything. And why did his fellow Democrats turn on him so fast and so furiously? As we explained in the angle last night, the Dems did not suddenly become beacons of morality, wagging their fingers at everyone else because they're on the moral high ground. This was a crass political ploy. Democrats dumping Franken overboard because now that they can claim, hey, the moral high ground for 2018 and pursue allegations against Donald Trump and Roy Moore. There's no due process. If you're, if you're accused and you're a man, you're this accused, is, you're done. This is Venezuela, Cuba. This is every third world banana republic. Let's not have due process. Let's not ask anybody any questions. Let's not have any chance to have a hearing. Let's just lynch him. Because when we get done lynching him, we'll be so pure. We'll feel so good. The new Puritanism in the Democratic Party, that's a switch. And you wouldn't believe the headlines we got in response. The Washington Post wrote, Al Franken finds unlikely defenders on Fox News. The Huffington Post, almost identical, meet Al Franken's Republican defenders. Mediaite, Laura Ingram, Newt Gingrich defend Franken from Dem lynch mob. Uh, <clears throat> Newsflash. We weren't defending Franken. We were defending the notion that one should be considered innocent until proven guilty. You see, the real story here, what we were warning you about, is this, it's kind of a PC pogrom underway with a nasty political edge to it. They're dropping like flies now. Former Democratic Congressman Harold Ford Jr. He was fired today by Morgan Stanley for allegedly several years ago uh, grabbing a woman. He was trying to take her out to drinks a, a couple of times, I guess. She didn't like that. And now he's vowing to sue the woman and Morgan Stanley in response that it never happened. Congressman Trent Franks, this was a bizarro one, he announced today that he's going to step down rather than endure an investigation for having what he called a discussion of surrogacy with two previous female subordinates. And that's a, that takes the cake. Now, look, we need to be careful here, you, myself, everyone, that we don't get so caught up in the white heat of the movement, the Me Too movement, that lives and careers are destroyed without much evidence and in a flash. And look, there are, sure, there are credible allegations out there. There are creeps that need to be shown the door, no doubt about it. But we also have to be wary of what I call the Me Too flu. The gender opportunists who come out of the woodwork with allegations many, many years later because it serves a political or a personal end. Are any of you getting tired of the sudden explosion of moral piety spewing from those who ended up enabling the real abusers by looking the other way because it was political expedient to do so for 